Good morning, everybody. Hope you're doing well today on this Saturday, guys. We made it to the weekend. Hallelujah. All right, cool, man. Uh, I got a new overlay, and I can already see that I've got to edit it, so... But I do like it a little bit better. It's a little bit less intrusive. So let me just uh, let me just pop that baby down just a little bit like this. Thanks for bearing with me, guys. Again, good technical analyst. Terrible at Streamlabs. It's a pain in the keister, man. All right, that looks pretty good. Hopefully you guys like that. Make sure you guys give Scott a shout out for making the new. Bam. I like that. That looks pretty beautiful right there. Make sure you guys give uh, give Scott a shout out uh, for the new, uh, as you can see here in the, uh, uh, right above my uh, uh, my face here. He made that new graphic last night. So big shout out to him, guys. Also, uh, I'll be putting it, it's in the Discord. I got to pop it in trade results, but we do have the nice, pretty uh, results from October. Finally put out in a, in a pretty PDF, and now we'll have the November results actually probably coming out. I'll probably get that done tomorrow. So everything looking pretty good for the trade group guys just i know it's early guys but if this is your first time to the channel make sure to hit that thumbs up button really appreciate it man and if this is your first first time joining us man make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell why you might ask because we're here at 11 a.m central standard time every single morning to talk about the news to talk about the markets and get a clear head for what's going on in crypto land guys <clears throat> all right so let's start off with some interesting news all right we got some cool stuff going on today so the first thing on the radar is this baby right here like a thief in the night as coinbase is wont to do coinbase quietly adds no fee paypal withdrawals now this actually happened uh this news came out yesterday and i had heard about it the, the actual the night that it happened because it came across my twitter sphere uh but i didn't actually talk about it but i did want to talk about it today so uh, according to paypal or excuse me according to coinbase as of november 2018 users will now be able to withdraw usd euro dollars and gbp to their paypal accounts for no fee so you can withdraw your fiat from your coinbase account to your paypal account no fee uh, only available currently in a few regions the united states the uk several areas in europe and canada uh, coinbase currently only supports local wallets for usd euro and gbp however this might be a signal that uh, cad and aud wallets are on the horizon because right now, uh, if you're a Canadian or an Australian resident using Coinbase, uh, you can't withdraw your funds directly. You can, uh, or excuse me, you you can't withdraw to PayPal uh, with this new with this new um, with this new feature. What you can do is sell your digital assets directly into CAD or AUD, respectively, depending on where you're at. So right now, the direction is only one way. You can only withdraw to your PayPal wallets. You can't deposit into Coinbase from PayPal. So no news on PayPal deposits to buy cryptocurrency via Coinbase at this time. And I think the interesting quote, Scott pointed this out, uh, quote, this decision came in shortly after Coinbase declared its plans for global expansion, global expansion, which was followed by its $300 million Series E funding round and the addition of the new stable coin Circle USDC to its exchange list. So pretty interesting right there, guys. So if you guys have been worried about how to withdraw, you wanted a nice, seamless, easy, uh, frictionless way to withdraw your funds from Coinbase into your, uh, into your, into anything that you control that's not coinbase uh paypal is now your option so pretty exciting pretty cool news uh just an easier just an easier route for you to get guys get for you to get your money out of crypto all right so that's it for that a little bit of update on ripple here so ripples x current gets an update now again you guys know how i feel about ripple but let's talk about this so x current gets an update uh xrp's current project is getting an update to uh, to 4.0 is the is the update number. So uh, if you guys aren't familiar with X Rapid or X Current, so X Current is a software. X Rapid is X Rapid and X Current are both softwares that are marketed to banks uh, for them to use to do uh, cross border transactions. Is what Ripple's uh, that's their kind of their namesake. What they're what they're kind of famous for doing. So X Current by using uh, by using X Current, uh, banks can now use on-demand liquidity via xrp when they're doing cross-border transactions so this means that banks are now going to be able to use xrp 
as a bridge currency when sending payments to other countries, which Ripple says will eliminate the payment processors that are currently needed to pre-fund bank accounts in destination countries. So the current model under XRapid is that you have to use fiat liquidity, not XRP liquidity. So the current model is that say you want to do a cross-border transaction from one country to the next, uh, you have to pre-fund a bank account over there with fiat, and then that's liquidity that you can tap into to do the transaction. So this is actually saying that with using X current, instead of using fiat as the liquidity, you're going to be able to use XRP as the liquidity, which would be good news for XRP. However, uh, so far, no banks have signed up for this. No banks are using this. Um, yeah, so interesting if this actually goes through and this starts to get some adoption from banks, this would be good news for XRP's price because there would be more banks holding XRP. Uh, XRP would be used more, uh, more in these cross-border transactions, but uh, just a little bit of the horizon right there for you guys. A little update on our favorite friend, Bitmain. Uh, Chinese mining giant Bitmain has launched its new cryptocurrency index, which will track 17 digital assets. So they say that this index is going to be tailored to both institutional and individual investors alike. It draws its price data from the largest exchanges. And Bitmain has its own analysis for each exchange based on, and I quote, regulatory uh, reputation, regulatory compliance, price transparency, stability, and trading volume. So the exchanges thus far that have made Bitmain's seal of approval are Bitfinex, no no, no wonder there, Binance, Bitstamp, Bitrix, Coinbase Pro, Gemini, Huobi, Ithbit, Kraken, OK, OKX, and Poloniex. So not a really big, not a really big shock and surprise there, guys. So no, uh, no KuCoin and uh, no HitBTC, guys. Uh, we'll leave that stuff to the pump and dumpers. Bitmain will update price by the second on its ticker for the index, so that's actually pretty sweet. Uh, coins that will be uh, added to their 17, the 17 digital assets that will be that will be in their ticker are going to be Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Bitcash, uh, EOS, Ethereum Classic, Litecoin, Ripple, Dash, IOTA, Monero, Cardano, Tron, Icon, uh, Stellar Lumens, Zcash, and Omize Go. So not a huge big surprise there, just your top dogs there. In addition, they will also create, they've also created an index of the top 10 cryptos known as the Bitmain Large Cap 10 Index or the BLC 10. So that's actually going to track the top 90% of market cap. Uh, and so that's, again, if you guys are, uh, if you guys are familiar with ETFs or funds or anything like that, not a huge surprise there. Uh, so what I thought was the most interesting was kind of the footnotes to this. So this is interesting. Obviously, we're still getting more more and more options for institutional investors and investors to get into indexes. And this is how things are marketed to retail investors because retail investors typically uh, prefer to invest in indexes and uh, ETFs and things of this nature so that they can capture So they don't have direct exposure to an asset. It's typically considered a safer investment vehicle. Uh, however, uh, the, the interesting footnotes is Bitmain's still in choppy waters. So there is a class action lawsuit that's been brought against them. We've known about this for a while on behalf of U.S. customers. And the guy who actually filed the complaint is a Los Angeles resident named Gore Gavorkian. Uh, however, the action is on behalf of all Bitmain's U.S. customers. He claims that Bitmain had redesigned their ASIC chips to earn mining rewards and transaction fees for the company rather than for the users themselves. Also, Bitmain's plans to go public on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange exposed some dubious figures in regards to the company's inventory, prompting a complete restructuring of their board of directors. As we know, Jihan Wu was actually removed as their CEO, stepped down. Uh, all the while, the once behemoth of mining technology is slipping behind other companies that are building ASIC chips. So the once powerful behemoth Bitmain having a lot of trouble, guys. Uh, Thailand, getting some news from Thailand today. So Thailand actually taking a, hard, a more hard-nosed approach than the uh, than the United States SEC, honestly. So Thailand, uh, as we talked about yesterday, the SEC, we talked about the Jobs Act of 2012 yesterday, that there is avenues for legitimate funding channels for projects wanting to ICO or STO from retail investors if they're wanting to to uh, obtain their funds from, from retail investors. So Thailand says that companies planning to issue security tokens abroad uh, would be guilty of wrongdoing under their Digital Assets Act that they enacted earlier in May this year if they don't go through processes similar to IPOs for fundraising, which as we spoke about yesterday, doing an IPO is, is an extremely expensive project. So Thai enacted crypto regulation in May. The country's Digital Assets Act regulates cryptos and ICOs and also installs the Thailand SEC as the main regulatory regulator of the crypto industry. However, STOs or security token offerings, uh, which is the new kind of slip around for ICOs, 
is uh, is not included within the scope of any current laws. However, they're coming out and saying like, ah, no, 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 STOs, uh, listen, they say right here, and I quote, uh, if STOs have conditions similar to other fundraising securities, they could undergo processes similar to those for IPOs, thus coming under the SEC Act. SEO, STO trading could fall under the Digital Asset Act if fundraising is carried out in the same manner as far as ICOs. Uh, the article goes on to talk about Satang Pro, which owns a cryptocurrency exchange in, in Thailand. Uh, and they are going, they're planning to launch an STO that they're planning on uh, letting the token trade on T0, which is Patrick Burns of Overstock.com notoriety, his exchange as well. So interesting news, the fact that they're kind of taking a more hard-nosed approach, but the fact that we are getting more regulation uh, is is also good. Uh, so this, you know, not supremely important, but just something to talk about, guys. And then as it's the weekend, guys, I wanted to go over some funny stuff with you because uh, it's been a rough time. It's been a rough 2018 for the hodlers out there, man, for us in the crypto space. Uh, you know, we've, you know, we've seen the memes, we've seen the anger, we've seen the frustration, we've seen the rage quitting. Uh, you know, we've gotten some positive stuff that we've, we've, we've really delighted in the pumps, really delighted in and some of the fun stuff that's come out this year. But overall, it's been a pretty negative year. So November has gone and down in history as a month that brought huge losses to the crypto markets. And while many of us wanted the market to show some change, I think I speak for everyone when I say we were hoping for a bull run and not this. Still, what we got instead was unity through desperation, a lot of panicking and theorizing on whether the market is capitulating, the exact opposite of what we wanted. So what we still got left is millennial humor that gets very self-deprecating very fast. That's what we're here for. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop this in the... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop this in the... Uh, Uh, hey, Mbe, thanks for joining us, man, in the stream, bro. The Bill and Ted reference in chat rules. Hey, brother. Uh, great stream. Thanks, man. Unfortunately, I'm stealing Ruby Tuesday Wi-Fi and it keeps freezing. Ah, oh, man, you got to get yourself on over to Denny's, man. They got the they got the best um they got the best uh they got the best Wi-Fi that you can hack. Uh, so here's just some some funny stuff, guys. Go check this out. Hopefully, this will bring some uh, some some levity to your day uh, that I think is very much needed. Uh, so start out. We'll just we'll go through a few of these. I won't play the YouTube uh, YouTube videos, but there's some really funny songs. Uh, Hold your Rome uh, says that the cryptocurrency bear market is so bad. Not even Chuck Norris checks his portfolio anymore. <laughs> oh man, oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, okay. Um, okay. 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 Let's see here. Uh, Okay, here's the good one. So many fake smiles, you never know what someone is going through. <laughs> Down 91.62% from the all-time high. Oh, man. Here's uh, Ferdinand Hodler, the disappointed souls. Ah, oh, shit. And uh, then, for those of the, th then for those of us who understand, so here's uh, like a tempura roll type thing at a, at, a, at, a sushi, at a sushi restaurant, and we get the Bitcoin roll 80% off. Oh, shit, dude. Uh, all our hopes go towards this type of 2019. So here's the bear market just beating the fuck out of us in 2018. 2019, we've got the bear pelt. Uh, this uh, this is actually probably my favorite. <laughs> to the moon. <laughs> oh, God, it doesn't get better than this, man. To the moon. Uh, <laughs> Didn't take into account the gravitational orbit of the moon around the around the Earth. So, but we can always hope for uh, maybe a slingshot effect to Mars, you know? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, the simplest way to explain scaling, right here. And uh, we all know this one. This one uh, was posted in our Discord a couple days ago. To check out those mountains. Ah, uh, good stuff, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. And uh, this this actually is great. So uh, guys, uh, go go check out this. This is uh, Angelo BTC. This is a real petition on change.org. And I'm going to read this. So the petition is titled, Stop Bitcoin from Dumping Lower. Okay. Problem. <laughs> Why it keep go down? Solution. Make it stop, sir. Personal. I don't think I make it. Help. <laughs> Oh my God, dude. So you guys have got to go over and sign this petition, man. Uh, you absolutely have to go. Uh, you absolutely have to go sign this petition, man. I'm dropping that in the chat right now. Please, please stop Bitcoin from dumping lower. Do your point, man. Do your point, man. Or do your, do your, uh, do your bit. Oh shit. I don't think it, I don't think that saved at all. Uh, so I'll pop this in the discord. Actually, I'll put this in the discord so you guys can go click on this. There you go. It's a kind of a huge ass long link, but there you go. You guys go check this out. So the only way to make the difference in the market, guys. And then, of course, we've seen this one, uh, January 2019. This, this actually is really good. Well-written fundamental analysis report on current market situations. Hoddle, we cans are selling. The virus is spreading. 
Fucking Ravens, man. Uh, so there's some good stuff, guys. There's some good stuff here, guys. Go check that out. That's uh, that's funny, man. I'm going to put this in the Discord as well. But make sure you guys go do your part, man. Go sign that goddamn petition. And stop the market from dumping lower. All right, I want to check in with the uh, with the premium group and give you guys an update on how the, uh, the trading's going for us. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, for those of you, brief update. Uh, week one closed out at 1038. Week two uh, had a lot of altcoin stops, uh, 1682 to the downside. Uh, week three really brought it back with our BitMEX trades. We were able to catch that XBT short most of the downside to 241%. And we're having a fantastic week four, actually, guys. We made a shit ton of calls this week. Uh, we've been super active in the trading group this week. Uh, currently at 190.46% with some uh, open active calls that we've got right now. Uh, able to catch a nice TRX uh, short or excuse me, uh, TRX, yeah, TRX short, and an XRP short as well uh, that just crashed through all four of our targets. That was great. Got stopped out, got got whipsawed on XPT yesterday, whatever. That's cool. Uh, and we've got some current uh, altcoin calls that I just popped out this morning and a couple uh, BitMEX calls as well. So, all right, uh, let's do our morning stuff. Uh, first off, um, if you guys haven't seen it, uh, shit, I got the website wrong. Uh, guys, go check out, um, oh, I'm going to have to edit this chat box. Restream chat. Let's just bring that up just a little. Oh, gosh, darned it. Gosh, darned it. I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. Just a man with a Streamlabs OBS. Okay. Okay, that's actually not too bad. All right. Uh, this is the streamer account, so there wouldn't be any... Uh... I'm not sure what you mean, Hayden. This is the streamer account, man. Uh, so nobody's able to see... Uh, uh, I don't have any personal information in here. So if something popped up... It's just, it's just an illusion. Um, all right. I already made that mistake. It, it wasn't a big mistake, but I went to Binance on the, uh, on the regular account when I was going through Google Chrome, and then I switched over to streaming through Brave Browser and set up the streamer account because it did show my email. Uh, so not a huge thing. I didn't show my password or anything, but, you know, so. And I'm pretty, you know, people email me all the time, so it wasn't a big deal, but still, you know. You don't know who's out there watching. I see you. All right, so um, let's check in with our uh, let's check in with our sentiment this morning. Uh, but the point I wanted to make, guys, is that if you haven't seen it already, uh, there was an address displayed. What on the change.org thing? Yeah, it wouldn't have been mine. Uh, on the change.org thing. Um, blah, blah, blah. Focus. Uh, if you guys have not watched Bennett's new video, uh, Bitcoin Trading Challenge, go check that out. So he talks about historical market depth, uh, and uh, it's actually a fantastic video, man. I haven't had time to play around with the website myself, uh, but uh, really actually uh, exciting from what I've seen. So go check that out, guys. Uh, Bitcoin uh, margin trading sentiment. Uh, let's look at today and see what we're looking at. So uh, we had the beginning of the day that the uh, the bulls were not in income. Uh, and then we had a nice spike up in bullish income right now. All right. So longs are probably going to be adding to their positions now because this is a short term movement. Bears are now in bears are now in negative profits. So if we see this go on for an extended period of time, we'll look for the situation to reverse. And actually, to be honest, I'm a little bearish on BTC right now, but we'll get into that when we get there. Uh, I wanted to go over the uh, the new CFTC commitment of traders report that did come out yesterday. So what do we see? We saw a rise in open interest on both exchanges. Uh, so uh, this is going to be kind of maybe boring for about 30 seconds, but hopefully you guys will find the value in this. Uh, so uh, CME uh, reports from Quandle right here. Uh, total open interest, 3,791. So here's the raw data right here. So here's the report from yesterday, November the 27th. Uh, well, it's not from yesterday, but it came out yesterday and it dates back to the 27th. So uh, let's compare this. Uh, so CBOE data, open interest on November 27th, 3,796 contracts. Uh, open interest on November uh, 20th, which was the date of the last report, 3,476 contracts. So that's a fairly significant rise in open interest on the CBOE platform. If we look at leveraged funds, uh, we're going to see that on the 27th, uh, open contracts for long positions, 639 to 1,022 open contracts to the short side. Uh, if we compare that with 
Uh, if we compare that with um, with last week, we have 483 to 712. So open interest rising on both. They're still about twice as high to the down, to the short side, about 60 40. Or excuse me, about uh, about 80 20 uh, to the downside or 70 30. Well, it's one of those 60, 40, 70, 30, or 80, 20. I can't, I, you can't, you can't miss with those, with that accuracy, man. And, and your mathematics live on, live on air. Uh, so open interest rising, uh, again, leveraged funds looking to hedge, but COE overwhelmingly short. So they're looking to, they're looking for the market to go down. If we look at other reportables, so these are going to be professional traders and asset managers. They are overwhelmingly to the short side, almost twice as much. 1,882 contracts to the short side to 1,158 to the long side. Uh, compare that with last week, 1,935 contracts to the short side. They've actually scaled down a little bit uh, and they've actually reduced their longs though. So they're taking profits. They've actually reduced their longs, uh, but, but overall individuals have reduced their shorts as well. So that is like three times, almost four times as uh, three times as long as they are short, which yeah, they're fucking stupid. Uh, CME. Uh, looking at Chicago Mercantile Exchange, so this is way more volume. Uh, open interest, this is interesting. They're actually more long than they are short, uh, but this isn't a huge divergence from last week, uh, which was 2,152 contracts to the long side, 1,912 to the short side. And today, or yesterday, 2,416 to the long side, 2,089. So rising open interest, uh, but they're just more, this is more, this looks like more hedging to me, 367 spreading. So a lot of hedging going on here, but they are looking to benefit from a little bit of upside, which they did catch. Uh, professional traders, 674 to the downside, uh, 261. So they're almost three times as short as they are long. And professional and retail traders about twice as as long as they are short. So overall, uh, professional traders and leveraged funds still more bearish than bullish. Uh, but we do see some interesting uh, movements from CME. Leveraged funds are looking to hedge, but they're looking to take advantage of the long trade. Uh, and overall, rising open interest, guys. So that means that more people are interested in trading uh, BTC futures contracts on professional platforms rather than less interested. So. If you guys think that uh, there's nobody stepping in to get interested in this space, well, you're wrong. Let's see, we've got funding coming up in about two hours, 37 minutes, guys, 2 p.m. My time right here. Let's go check in with Coin Farm. Margin positions, open positions in XPT right now, uh, 54. So this this switched last night. I was talking about, uh, you know, and it's it's kind of uh, aggravating that we got whipsawed out of our long trade, but this this stuff happens, man. I'm not it's, I'm not too pissed off about it, uh, you know, because yesterday was pretty much a day in profit, especially with how XRP, because we hit T1 on XRP on our short, so that really canceled out losses from the XPT whipsaw, uh, but and then we had TRX come through, so that was uh, that was a good position as well. So we were able to end up yesterday with about 11% profit. Um, so yesterday when we were looking at this, we were like 65% short to 35% long. Uh, and now we've we've switched. I said yesterday that that position was unsustainable. So you know, obviously hindsight being twenty twenty, should have stayed in the long, but I didn't. I took you know I, I had my risk set, and uh, we were in a period of consolidation. Could have broken down either way, uh, but now sentiment looking positive. So and this is an unsustainable level yet. Uh, until we get to that sixty forty ratio, we won't really look for a strong trend reversal. But this is just one aspect that uh, I'm still feeling a little bearish about the market. Looking at where we're coming up to a huge supply zone, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, looking at uh, margin analysis. Uh, so yeah, we got longs piling in right now, 52% to the, to the dominance right here to 47% of shorts. Uh, we've got a, Ooh, look at that baby. Look at that. Just in the last 30 minutes, just one, just two minutes ago, 4 million, 4.6 million shorts. Uh, and now in this current minute, we've got shorts just piling in to take advantage of this guy. So I actually feel pretty justified in my XBT short at this point in time. Yep. Absolutely nailed it. Cool. Not doing too bad. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, and Let's go check in with uh, Pitmex Rect just for fun. And then I want to see if I can find, uh, there's a tweet from Anthony Pompliano that I want to, uh, that I want to look at. So yeah, 24 seconds ago, a lot of longs just got absolutely wiped out on XBT, man. Woo! Ultra kill, multi-kill. And time, you will know what it is like to lose. Ah, I love you, Bitmax Rack. You do a fantastic thing. And you know, this is another thing, guys. I don't know if you noticed this, but uh, uh, but I just actually like put this together the other day. Like, you see the Mountain Dews and Doritos? Like, this is supposed to simulate like red and green candles. Like, I know, like that's a duh when you're looking at it, but I just like was like, oh fuck, that that just clicked in my brain the other day, man. All right, so uh, let's uh, let's actually see if we can find that tweet from Mr. Uh, Anthony Pompliano. A pomp. Here we go. From the pop. 
All right, so where is that tweet? Here we go. This one right here. So this came out 18 hours ago. Uh, Anthony Pompliano says, I have received three messages in the last 24 hours from crypto hedge fund managers that are shutting their funds down. Let the great bear market purge begin. So this is stuff that we've been talking about, uh, you know, the SEC coming out with regulation, especially against Air Fox and Paragon, and we see avenues for ICOs to legitimately uh, come to terms. Uh, we're going to see a lot. We're going to see a lot of stuff over the next two years. We're going to see a lot of these ICOs and token projects get wiped out. I've been saying this for a long, long time, a long, long, long time, guys. That doesn't mean that profiting off the altcoin runs is a fantastic thing, but uh, we have to be aware of what the fundamentals are in this market, and the fundamentals are overwhelmingly with Bitcoin. We see the institutional interest in Bitcoin. We don't see the institutional interest in other smaller altcoins. So until that changes, guys, uh, yeah. So this week in crypto, NASDAQ launching BTC futures, Coinbase launching OTC desk, uh, Masario Crypto launching a registry, Harbor launched their first project, and Abu Dhabi Bank launched $500 million blockchain bond, uh, bear market, get rid of tourists so entrepreneurs can focus on building, guys. So if you guys have lost faith, in the crypto space over the bear market of 2018 do not do that man because there is fascinating awesome great awesome stuff coming in guys that we're going to see over the next few years and those who are strong enough to hodl through this tough space guys man again i'm on record saying buy the dip at 5k again at 3k guys so uh doesn't mean we can't go down to 1.8k but i'll see him i'll be saying buy the dip there and when we're back up in the green you guys will be thanking me but again hashtag not financial advice never invest more than you can lose and please for the love of god do your own goddamn research man all right, so let's get into the charts, guys. <sighs> so looking at Mr. Bitcoin on Bitstamp here this morning. Uh, well, uh, let's see what's happened, guys. Uh, I drew this level of support down here a couple days ago. I drew this level of support here as well. Uh, this level of support held kind of okay. We dropped down a little bit below it. This level of support ended up holding quite nicely. Uh, we've came back up and are retesting the resistance level that we got rejected from here where we had a supply area. And we ultimately got rejected from the top of our movement here so we're coming up on the 55 moving average on the four hour chart so we're going to see if we can actually gain that that uh, four hour momentum and we'll go from there going to the daily chart uh we get this nice little reversal bullish candle uh we had this strong uh bearish engulfing candle yesterday that came down again just to our support levels that we had drawn out uh, we've got, uh, again, resistance creeping down in on us. We're now coming up to test, uh, the eight period, the eight day mo exponential moving average and the 13 day exponential moving average. So again, not really positive until we can get above those on a daily basis. We've got a very strong supply zone right here that we need to break over again. I've been talking about this for a while, this area right here, you can see it on the VPVR, this area acting as very strong resistance because a lot of position sellers are in the market at this point. But once we get above this region, we have this, we have this low volume node above us. And there's really nothing. Look how price cut through this area like a like a hot knife through butter. It's going to do the exact same thing coming back up. And so if we're able to get above these areas of resistance, we've got little baby bitch resistance here at about uh, 4876. We've got little baby bitch resistance at about 5100. But those are all very small levels of resistance, possible areas where we might stop out and you can catch a short scalp, something like that. Uh, but uh, if we are able to get above these areas, then I will be looking to take a swing breakout trade to the upside here, uh, back to our point of control. Uh, and then we'll go from there, guys. That'll be congruent with our 55 period moving average. It depends on how, how quickly we can get up there if our point of control actually moves down here a little bit. Uh, I'm expecting that probably if we hang out and consolidate at these lower levels for a while, the 55 period moving average will creep down on upon us. Uh, and so we actually will be looking for lesser targets, but we'll just wait and see how quickly, how fast we can get up there and see how long this daily period of consolidation lasts. Again, going back over to the four hour chart, uh, doesn't look supremely bullish to me because look at the falling volume. Uh, this looks like a fairly weak movement on low volatility. Uh, so this actually just looks to me like a retest. Uh, we came down and retested the point of control and we're coming above it. I don't really see the signs right now with volume that we are going to be able to make it above this supply zone. Uh, so again, expecting resistance from our current area right here where I initially entered into my short, uh, looking to double up a little bit higher and then I will be out of the trade if we actually get above here and close something like a four hour or an hourly candle up here because that will be a sign 
uh, that we are reversing the trend and the, that we might be potentially looking at a breakout trade, but I'm going to need volume to confirm that. So a uh, strong supply area right here, as you can see, uh, and until we get abo above that, uh, the sellers are going to, as we expect, aggressively defend their positions, which is exactly what they did here and what we're seeing them do here as well. Looking at the longer time frame, you can see that we actually are coming up to the higher time frame. If we take the dump into account and take these position sellers into account, we're actually coming up to the point of control and rejecting right off of it. So going down to the 30 minute chart, which is what I trade off of. What can we expect uh, maybe in the next few hours? Well, uh, again, uh, I entered into a short uh, and let's take in a little bit more market data right here. Okay, cool. That's kind of what I want to see. And let's move that for the sake of argument. Let's move the VPVR over to the left so you guys can see clear. There we go. Excellent. So price was rejected from this supply area right here, this distribution area, came back down to retest our current point of control, consolidated here for quite a while. So key areas that I'm going to be looking at, uh, let's just uh, use VPVS. So key areas that I'm going to be looking at, clearly, uh, we see a volume spike, let's see here, uh, right here. And again, I had this on the chart, but I took it off to be fair to the charts that I'm drawing up for the members. So we see significant resistance here. Uh, this is congruent with a volume spike for the session of the 28th of November. Uh, this is all spike right here on the VPVR, indicating the massive amount of volume traded at this level. A lot of position sellers in this market, because you can see this is an area where sellers sold here. This is an area where sellers sold here. And this is an area where sellers sold here as well. So this is an area where sellers are going to want to aggressively defend their positions. Uh, getting above that, we have this area really of resistance, really starting there and going up to here. Okay, we get a little bit of a break above that. Uh, we have a shallow pocket, uh, a, a, a low volume node, excuse me, uh, in between the top from 4365, call it, to about the bottom of 4424. So that's an area where price is going to move very quickly through. And then we come back into our next cluster of resistance. You can see it's confirmed here by the previous developing point of control. It's also congruent here with our supply area that we had right here. A lot of areas where people were entering into shorts. This is an area where we expect sellers to aggressively defend their positions. So if we take that overall view, guys, I'm not looking at a swing trade for a long term position until we actually break above these resistances. It's too tricky. Uh, it's too it's too dangerous. I'm just going to be looking at taking short scalps uh, like the one that just played out, for example. So uh, we'll look for price today to potentially see if we reject off these areas and return to the point of control. Uh, we do have the 30 minute momentum, so we will look to see if we can get a retest of the 55 period moving average point of control, as we see right here when we actually do break down. Down, uh, we retested so we'll wait to see uh, support currently right now back at those areas of 39.92 and support at our current point of control uh, current point of control for the for the for the longer time frames at 39.70 uh, the daily point of control at 41.30 so key areas to watch out for for support uh, key areas to look for shorts if we break down from them as well yep low weekend volume of course so I, I heard some people say that they're expecting the market to be green for the weekend uh, I'd like to see that in all coins, especially if BTC does not, if I get stopped out of my trade, or even if I don't get stopped out of my trade, because I'm willing, you know, I'm, I'm going to double up once we get up here as well. Uh, but uh, if BTC like maintains the separate area, say we consolidate here, uh, then we're going to see some green in the altcoin markets. And that's why I made some altcoin calls today. But yeah, weak volume uh, on the weekend. So we'll see if we can actually stay green uh, until, uh, until until monday so and we'll see if we get another monday bloody monday mondays have been really really rough for us lately guys super rough uh, let's check out the heat map just for funsies <laughs> guys congratulations man uh we're having a nice green day fantastic awesome btc dominance 54 percent bcash down a little bit everything up pretty much across the board pretty nice green day guys what do we got here pax coin down uh what's this usdc down and net down all right so pretty much uh pretty much a beautiful fantastic green day guys so not a bad day to take some profits or look for profitable positions to enter in so btc usd let's take a look at mr ethereum bitcoin ethereum bitcoin you know i really would like to long it from right here you know i'd really like to take a stab at this um because you know we've got this falling wedge pattern that we're trading into and we've got these resistance targets above us uh and we did actually like once we broke the wedge we tested this so it does look like a false breakout so i'll wait to see like if we break down below like 27 456 i'll look for price to come lower down to the lower area of the wedge uh, and maybe look to enter in there 
Uh, but yeah, typically falling wedge pattern, fairly bullish. And we've got this strong reversal area right here. Uh, but looking at volume, I charted out where the support really should be because this is where the majority of buyers stepped in. That's also congruent here. If you can see the little baby uh, point of control uh, in the session, you can see that it matches perfectly with actually where I have my support level. Get back over here to our falling wedge. So yeah, man, I mean, I'm tempted to long ETH BTC from here, but uh, I'm just going to wait for the breakout because if these uh, supports break, then we're going to drop lower. So uh, nothing really has changed. Uh, testing the support right now at 28.018. And we've got that support down below us at uh, 274. Uh, not uh not not 274.0274 uh above us uh we got some resistance at about 290 uh, again resistance at about 298 and again resistance at about uh 31553 so can i do xrp second it's second now all right sorry my bad maybe i should start doing xrp second so let's look at xrp usdt uh so i had plotted out this potential uh inverted head and shoulders yesterday on the four hour chart looking here at the Ikenashi candle Looking here at Heiken Ash candles. Hiya. Uh, still holding that 786 Fibonacci retracement quite well. Uh, we did dip down below it and came into my accumulation zone where I said I'd like to be looking to pick up XRP or really the last level of support because that's our consolidation level right here. Uh, below that, not looking really good for XRP USDT. Uh, not a whole lot of volume below us, uh, expecting us to go lower uh, down into these accumulation levels, uh, about 278 if we actually do drop down below this level of support, but it's holding right now. Uh, looking at the big picture, so looking at TD Sequential, uh, what do we see? Uh, we see that price did basically reverse on a perfected nine count to the downside. We had one to three can one to four candles of uh, consolidation, and now we're coming back up. So we've got the 55 period moving average on the four hour chart above us and TDST resistance at 3980. Uh, so 0.39488, which is going to be uh, so this uh, excuse me. So 39. I'm looking at USDT. So about 39 cents, almost uh, 39 and a half cents. Uh, if we're able to break above that TDST resistance, I'll be pretty happy. If we're able to close a four hour candle above that, that will be a breakout trade for me uh, although you could have entered right here so we've got this ascending wedge i talked about this yesterday that it might not be a bad area to enter into usdt or excuse me in an xrp usdt uh, and that would have uh, worked out well for you so we've got, currently got resistance at about that 38 39 cent 39 and a half cent level uh, if we're able to close a four hour candle above that level that would be pretty much validation of my uh, of my inverted head and shoulders pattern here and also a break of tdst resistance and the 55 period moving average on the four hour chart very bullish to me very good sign of a breakout uh, and we're and i would be looking to target well if we're doing the measured move if we're doing the measured move from the head to the neckline and we break out here. Uh, well, we're looking at returning to that uh, 0 0.618 level at about uh, 45 cents, at about 45 cents. Got a little bit of resistance on the way there, resistance at uh, 43 cents, and resistance here at the top of the descending trend line at about 44, about 45 cents. So nice, not bad targets, about 43, 44 cents, uh, 45 and 46 cents, guys. Pretty good targets if we do break to the upside here. And then we'll see what happens when we get back to that descending trend line that has kind of kept price down. But breaking above that 55 period moving average for me is generally pretty good. We generally get a good movement out of that, even if it is a false breakout, guys. So gotta keep your stops tight. Uh, right now, not a bad time to be in position on XRP USDT, really, at the moment. Uh, going and looking at Bitcoin Cash. Yeah, so Bitcoin Cash is actually having some nice movement here, guys. Uh, we broke down below the support level uh, that I was expecting to hold or that had the potential to hold and we fell down to the lower uh, accumulation area, the, the lower supply zone, that support held. Uh, that was also, uh, we see here that we did approach uh, the break of this descending trend line on very low volatility. So we're expecting a fairly violent move from BCH here coming soon. Um, We've got this period of accumulation that we see right now, and I think we're gonna be looking to break out of it. So current support right now is gonna be your descending trend line and your support level at about $171 to $168. Uh, looking at upside potential targets, let's see here. Looking at upside potential targets of $184, $189, 
$191. Uh, but this break of this descending trend line is kind of nice for me, guys, because we have not broken this level yet. We did get a little bit of a fake breakout now, so this actually seems more sustained. Now, the volume is fairly weak. Uh, the ATR, however, is low, so I'm going to see that means that volume is probably going to pour in here fairly soon, and we're going to see a violent movement. We are now trading above the daily point of control and yesterday's point of control. So uh, we'll see what happens. This is actually starting to look pretty bullish to me. Uh, and, uh, oh shoot, I got to start hiding these, but yeah, it's actually starting to look pretty bullish for me, uh, based on spot price. So I'll be over on BitMEX watch and Bcash pretty closely today, man. <laughs> All right, guys. So let me, uh, let me scroll through the chat and respond to you wonderful people. Gabe Anderson, how are we doing this morning? Was going to make a trade uh, early this morning, but Gemini Exchange is under maintenance until 3. Oh, man. Damn you, Gemini. Jurgen Ernst, good morning, man. Asleep at the wheel. Hey, what's going on, brother? Ben Joseph. Hey, Tim A. What's going on, man? Coin Hustle. Joy V. How are we doing this morning, man? Light Yagami. What's going on? Number one fan. RJ Jamal, God, I love this show. Hey, man, thank you, man. We love that you're watching. Most excellent. Ah, uh, yeah. RJ Jamal asks, when is the bear market over? Please say today. Oh, man, I wish I could, man. I wish I could. Crypto Capsule, good morning to you. Oh, okay. So Scott says the 1st of December will catalyst the upward movement 15K by the end of the year. Hell yeah, man. Don't be like DJ Khalid and Mayweather. Yeah, that's right, dude. When do I see Ethereum deviating from Bitcoin? Uh, when, uh, when there's more open interest in Ethereum perpetual swap, or excuse me, when there's more open interest in Ethereum futures contracts from institutional investors than in Bitcoin, or when there's at least an equal amount. I don't think anything's going to deviate from Bitcoin until they start getting the attention that Bitcoin is from institutional investors. And Ethereum just is not getting that, man. Ripple is just not getting that. They're getting a lot of attention from retail investors, but they're not getting a lot of attention from institutions, man. They're just not. Johnny Boy Crypto, what's going on in the house, man? Hey, that was one thing I said I was going to do. So let me do that real quick. So we talked about this yesterday. So I'm actually going to go to YouTube and see if you are restreaming us. And if you are, yeah, okay, cool. So I see that you're restreaming us here. And then I'm assuming also on Johnny Boy Crypto. There, let me, uh, subscriptions. There we go, there it is right there. So now I can actually, engage with the chat over here so let's see here hey max x man thanks for watching us on uh, johnny boy crypto stream i like ethereum around here sv will try to flip abc again no idea where abc is headed was looking at eight of four cents once was a dollar 25 yeah you're darn right dude it was once a dollar twenty-five. So let's take a look at uh, Bcash SV, man. Oh, I knew I should have shorted TRX, man. I was I was been staring at this screen all day long, not all day long, like before the show, and I was like, God, like price was here, and I was like, Ah, oh, I want to short it, man. And then it came down here, and I was like, Ah, oh, I want to short it. But then I went over and looked at the spot price, and I'm like. Ah, uh, it looks so different. I'm like, ah, uh, I actually kind of want to long it down here. So I just stay out of the, stayed out of the trade. But man, that would have been a nice scalp right from where I wanted to get in that bad boy right here. Right here would have not have been bad too the second time that I was looking at it. But I digress. Let's go take a look at Bitcoin Cash SV. Uh, beware, guys. A lot of people shilling like NEO pairs right now. Uh, NEO USDT uh, looks like crap to me. Um, so just beware, guys. You know, my neck feels better, but honestly, it still kind of hurts like a bitch. All right, so Mr. Bitcoin Cash SV. So we did come down quite a bit.
Come down to the 50% retracement level right here, looking to maybe potentially pop in a double bottom. Not a whole lot of volume beneath us. Uh, yeah, so this was kind of a single print area. So let's let's see where I would be interested in this uh, right here. Let's take a gander. Okay, so lost the four hour momentum breaking down the 55 EMA, but that's all right. It's not, it's not super strong, not super high volatility. Uh, looking for, um, uh, looking to see if we consolidate right around that period. That actually doesn't look too terrible to me. Uh, ATR falling quite nicely, man. Volatility dropping off the face of the planet and rising volume in an uptrend, descending volume on a retracement, generally indicative of a pullback and not an actual reversal in trend. So we could actually see a nice pump from Bitcoin Cash SV. Uh, I definitely don't think that they are out of the game here, guys. So let's look where are some key areas of interest here for Bitcoin Cash SV. Well, uh, we've got some pretty strong local resistance right here at this level. Right here at this level. And actually, I hate to, you know, I really like to make these things a little bit more accurate. But uh, I'll just do it like that. So current resistance right here. And then really the resistance, we've got a little bit of baby bitch resistance right here. I'll take that right there, just like that. And also again up here, this is a little bit more significant. So looking, if we're able to break this area right there, that'd be pretty positive, especially if we're able to close above that area right there. So where's some support? Uh, well, we've got, God, it's tentative, man, but we've got a little right here. Got a little bit of support. really right here as well not strong support really not strong support honestly uh, and then we get down to this area right here which is pretty gosh darn damn strong support right here all right so this actually doesn't look like a bad place to enter uh holding that 50 percent common retrace consolidating around that 55 ema volatility like dropping off volume dropping off uh looking for a bit of a movement here man it's actually probably not a bad place to start stocking up especially if you've got some drawdown risk uh so that's about 17 percent. so i hate to make trades like that man i really do especially in this altcoin market but uh man bcash has the potential to pump here dude uh Unless, let's see here, the only other way that I see this potentially working out is definitely wouldn't call this, definitely wouldn't call that a bull flag like whatsoever. Now that's a descending triangle, so that actually usually, usually breaks to the downside. So I would just, you know what, I just actually wait on this baby right here. That's what I would do. If we're if we drop uh, below here, let me put that warning line here. Looking at VPVR, there's no support after after this level until we get lower. So that's actually going to be yellow and a little flag in that baby there for you. So if we're actually, if we drop down below, uh, if we close like a four hour candle below uh, 0.021674, uh, I'm going to be, uh, I'm not going to be looking to enter until we, until we tentatively get down to these support levels. I'll look again uh, when price hits uh, 203.81 and I'll look again when price hits around the 618 level right here. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to add an alert. Uh, no less than right there, but really what I'd rather do the way that I'd rather take the trade is I would wait for this breakout of this level right here to get above this distribution area. So I'd probably call it right here, right at the top of this level right here. Boom. So add alert on that trend line and greater than. No. Uh, 
boom, just like that. Uh, so yeah, um, and then I'd be looking to take that breakout trade to potentially uh, here about uh, 281 to potentially 319. And that allows me to set my stop much tighter because I know that if we get above these levels, I can go below the, I look at the point of control like once we get to that area, but just looking at market data right now, I'd set my, I set my stop like, oh shit. So if I'm entering here, that allows me to set a pretty nice tight stop uh, and allows me to get a pretty nice R to R out of that. So that's about a 13% gain to a four and 4.3% 4 loss. So that's a good R to R. And also that's a fantastic R to R as well. And that allows me to set my stop below where there was a lot of accumulation, but I'd wait to get up here. And if there's sideways accumulation here, I'll set my stop below that as well. I'll just average out of the position. Again, guys, I'll say this like for the ninth time. Uh, cryptocurrency, just like Forex, hard stops are going to be your enemy. You're going to get kicked out of a position, guys. Choose a time frame to trade on. I like trading on the 30 minute time frame or the four hour time frame. Uh, and uh, wait for whatever time frame that you're trading on. Wait for a full bottle can full body candle close uh, below your stop loss before you before you exit your position. Nine times out of ten. Now there are particular situations where. Uh, we get like a strong candle down on strong volume and it's breakdown below support. Uh, typically, we're going to see buying pressure though. So I'll wait for price to come back up a little bit and then I'll stop loss out. So I don't sell at the bottom. I wait for price to retrace a little bit uh, because even if it's going to be a breakdown, there's going to be like a slight retest of resist of, of uh, support turn resistance before things really start crashing down. All right, so let's get to the chat. Hey, Max. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. All right. So let's check our restream chat. Uh, the XRP BTC chart makes me want to step in front of a moving bus. Oh, yagging me. Johnny boy. Thanks, man. I like the backdrop, too. Yep. So, uh, Guys, you don't have to, don't feel obligated, but that is a BTC uh, donation code. If you guys would like to bloop, scan that with your thingy, you guys can send us some BTC. Uh, Nitin Soki, hey, good morning. Nitin Soki asks, is BTC expected to retrace to 3,800? That is an interesting question. Because that's exactly where we were targeting for the potential short. Uh, yeah, that would be my idea. Um, that would be my idea. Uh, Short-term targets, though, uh, I'd just be looking for a return to the point of control down here at about 41.30 in the short term, uh, unless you're interested in XBT, so let's actually go get those numbers. Uh, looking for a return to the point of control around 41.64 or 41.30 on BitMEX, uh, and then if that is not able to break, well, then, yeah, we're definitely going down to at least 4,000, about 40, 40, 20, about 40.20. Uh, yesterday's daily candle closed, that point of control at about 39.46. Uh, and then 3,800 below us if we do actually go that low. So one day at a time, one Satoshi at a time, averaging out, averaging in as always, guys. Yeah, I feel real, I feel real good about this uh, XRP short, guys. So this is the XRP short that we just closed out yesterday. Uh, so hopefully you guys see my justifications for taking this trade. Uh, I saw that we had a volume spike right here in yesterday's, this is actually the 30th of November. I saw that we had a volume spike uh, here uh, for selling and I knew that when we this is actually we entered into the trade I posted the trade here uh, around this level right here and I said enter in your short around this level uh, the reason why is because I was targeting this volume this high value node right here and I knew that there were a lot of position sellers uh, that corresponds with the with uh, again not a whole lot of volume but if we go back here that's also a fairly important area as well uh, this is where a lot of retail sellers tried to get in as well and we can see that bump on the VPVR here on the right. A lot of position sellers at this point wanting to aggressively defend their position. And then I saw that like super weak, like non-existent volume on that rise back up. That's not a strong movement, guys. So, and then we just retargeted high volume nodes on the way down, guys. Boom, 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 boom. And we crashed through all of them. So feeling really good. That was a good XRP short. Uh, TRX played out too as well. All right, come on, Bcash. Let's look at that uh, XRP BTC chart. I want to see. Uh, I want to see. Um, I want to see why Yagami wants to step in front of the bus. Uh, 
And then we'll check in with Mr. Theta Token, man. We'll check in with Theta Token. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's pretty rough, dude. Yeah, XRP BTC art. TC chart is looking pretty rough, but that's what's going to happen. When XRP goes up, man, um, when XRP goes up, or excuse me, when BTC goes up, XRP BTC is going to go down because they're negatively correlated. XRP USDT, not too bad though. So you got to take that with a grain of salt, man. So XRP, I'm actually thinking is deviated, as deviated, well, is already deviated from, uh, from BTC price in a fairly significant way, in a fairly significant way. XRP BTC. Let's go to the four hour chart. Maybe. Nah. Dreaming. I'm sure Hayden could draw a better one up than me. Well, look, it doesn't look too terribly awful, guys. I mean, you've got a pullback to test uh, resistance right around this area. You have your resistance here, here, and you have price pulling back about to that level, potentially forming a double bottom right here on fairly weak selling volume. Uh, so you have strong volume on the movement up, weak volume into consolidation. You've got more buying pressure here. You've got more here. Period of solid period of consolidation is actually a supply area, uh, and then we don't actually break down below that. Or excuse me, when we do actually break down below that, it's on very very weak volume, guys. ATR is dropping as well, so we're expecting to see a bit of a more volatile movement here coming up. So where do we got support for Mr. XRP BTC? Well, the danger zone is we're coming up on this low volume node area, guys. So we probably will go through this fairly quickly. And I'm just right there. And I'm gonna make that like that. And uh, get your race car going. Feel like chart vampire now, putting this little stuff on the chart. But I think it's funny. Uh, and then, yeah, you kind of run into, until you run into your support right here. So that's congruent with your uh, point of control on that, uh, on this day's uh, session right here. These two days session, you had a strong period of accumulation right there. Uh, it's not the strongest volume in the world, but it's support. It's definitely support, guys. Uh, and then you've got an area where price is going to zoom through again. And then you actually come into what I consider to be pretty strong volume here but you can actually see that this is why session volume is so important because vpvr does not distinguish between the selling pressure right here and the selling pressure here and the buying volume here so this actually is not strong support this is actually an area where sellers were just looking to get out of the market uh, but we will put it down there because it's potentially it's an area where price where traders were interested in trading so it's potentially an area where price could reverse uh, and then really our strong support is right here because that's where we have our period of accumulation as we can see here So session volume is helping us to distinguish the difference between what VPVR is not going to give us the specifics for So really strong volumes right here So for strong volume we do a box Strong support, excuse me I'm all out of love I'm so lost without you Oh ripple why are you going down uh so yeah uh and we've got some resistance above us we've got local well actually we've got a lot of local resistance right now uh let's split the baby and call it let's just call it this local resistance there not super strong resistance we've got super strong resistance up here because this was our actual period of distribution Okay. So yeah, guys, this doesn't look uh, super fantastic great to me unless a double bottom reversal plays out here and we get a big spike in volume. Then I'm, if we get a big spike in volume, then I'm expecting a push probably back up to this resistance area. So uh, triple zero ninety three thirty nine potentially on the low side, uh, with maybe a little bit of hairy hairiness there at uh, quadruple zero ninety sixty nine. 
Um, but yeah, more than likely, this is looking like a hot knife through butter down to potentially uh, uh, 8,430 Satoshis is, uh, is what's probably more likely here on Mr. Binance. Let's try. Let's just... Uh, Although, man, although sentiment's really, really low on XRP BTC, so that's a potential positive. So yeah, I mean, the potential is there to get that nice volume spike in if we do see that and we actually don't close into this area uh, with like maybe one or two more candles, then that double bottom will play out. We see that nice, if we see a nice increase here in buying pressure, uh, then, uh, then a lot of these shorts are gonna get wrecked and price should move rapidly up on XRP BTC. But I don't know, I don't think so. I don't think so. Just for the sake of fun, let's look at Heiken Ashi. And let's look at the big picture. Yeah, so price reversed on a nine. We had a unsuccessful count to the upside, got rejection from our 21 period moving average, and came back to do a double bottom. But look at this, guys. Completed 13 by setup, completed by 13 countdown. So we'll see what happens here, guys. This is the area where price needs to reverse, or we're going down because this whole little uh this looks like a little bit of a dead cat bounce. If price continues to go down, it will be a confirmed dead cat bounce. Uh, so, but this is the area where uh, where they need to step in and buy, guys, on XRP BTC. Head over to Binance, guys, if you want price to go up, guys. Vote with your wallets. I don't know what to tell you, man. I got to figure out seems like uh okay seems like i can actually extend that chat box frame a little bit okay like that yeah that looks good and then i can actually extend that restream chat just a little bit okay that looks a little better oh god i fucked it up Why is it like cropping? Oh, there we go. Oh, damn, that's cropping a lot. Hold on, guys. Okay. So now, let's see how this works. Oh, uh, man, that looks really scrunchy. Looks super scrunchy, man. Oh, no, I'm a gird. I'll fix it afterwards, guys. I'll fix it afterwards. I'll reduce that scale on the restream chat. Doesn't look super fantastic, but at least now stuff's not getting cut off. Well, we are broadcasting in 1080p, guys, so small baby steps, man. Small baby steps. All right, let's see here. Uh, somebody just, uh, somebody said something and I think that's Japanese, sorry man. Stacking Stoner says, just started following but thoroughly appreciate your insight and knowledge. Hey man, thank you dude. Tim Allen says, baby on board. Ben Joseph asks, did I say the premium plan on discount? Uh, if you're talking about the, the, um, if you're talking about the premium subscription service for cracking cryptocurrency, technically it ended today, or technically it ended at midnight last night, but I did not actually update the prices in Discord until this morning. Uh, because that was going to be our Black Friday sale that extended, and we are going to have a sale on it uh, for Christmas time, but. Uh, I did, somebody did DM me this morning and said, hey, you know, I'd like to subscribe. And so, you know, we we, we did all that and, and got him into the system. Uh, and, and, I, and I had to give him, I gave him the price. I was fair. I gave him the price that I had listed, which was the discount price. So if you contact me today, I'll, 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 I will honor that discount price. So until midnight today, anybody that DMs me and wants to sign up for this, uh, for the, uh, for the premium signals and one-on-one -on -one mentorship. So you get access to the, uh, to the private voice chat. Uh, for day trading, you get access to the private chat for day trading. You get access to all my trade setups and signals, and you also get access to weekly webinars where I discuss trade strategy, methodology, and trade setups. 
uh, as well as our access to our resource library and our tracking sheet, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and early access to any bots that, that we develop in the future, which we're working on right now. Um, yeah, so that's $49.99 for a month of access, $129.99 for three months, $799.99 for a year. Um, that's the discounted price. I will honor that if you guys DM me today, but it ends at midnight tonight because now I do have the new prices up, the original prices. Um, Vansh Bajaj, I, I know I'm saying that wrong, man. I know. I'll just say, I'll just say Vansh. Are Bollinger Bands a good indicator? Yeah, they're good. Bollinger Bands are good classics, man. Like, you know, the traditional, I guess, like, I would say, like, the traditional way, like, the first way, like, that I really learned how to trade um, was using Bollinger Bands. Actually, hold on, before I look at that, let's look at Theta. So, the great pump and dump of our time, uh, Theta token right here. Uh, interesting potential movement right here. Uh, so, obviously, as we know, like, Theta just blew the fuck up, guys. Uh, and I don't know, I, I'm not exactly sure why. I mean, they, well, I do know why, actually, because uh, it, they announced a partnership with CJ Media, which apparently is huge, like they run the game over there uh, for media entertainment. They have a partnership with Samsung VR. They've got a partnership with Sliver, which has a partnership with Twitch. So this is all really good. A lot of people really, really, really bullish on Theta right now. Uh, I had charted out that we had this volume area, this value area in between uh, last night at 25, 29 and 1890. Uh, price continues to move down on lowering volume and lowering volume. ATR is getting extremely low. I can already tell from looking at this chart. So we're looking at a pretty violent goal is continuing to push price down. So right now the current point of control is 1975. So that's the price that I have my eye on. Uh, break above that, you know, maybe potentially look for a breakdown. Uh, but we've got that 786 coming down here, that 1754. So key areas that I'm looking at right now, we have to readjust our value area because it's changed. So key areas right now we're looking for. This stays the same because that's when volume drops off. Uh, but key areas I'm looking at now is if price continues to stay under 1975 and if price stays above 1754, stays close to 1754 because no volume down here. So most likely price will just continue to move down until we reach another accumulation level. Uh, but to address Bollinger Bands. So let's get rid of my indicators. So the tradition um, Bollinger Bands and RSI. Uh, it doesn't work fantastic in all market conditions, but uh, it's not uh, it's not a terrible indicator. So Bollinger Bands, uh, pretty simple strategy, guys. You got your Bollinger Bands on there, and you've got your uh, EMA, which is running through the middle, and you've also got your EMAs, which are measuring your top and your bottom. Uh, and when you're looking, you want two indicators to give you confirmation entered into a price. So you see here that price is touching the lower level of the Bollinger Band, and RSI is touching the oversold level. That's a buy signal. Uh, you take that buy, and you're looking to sell at the top of the Bollinger Band, uh, you're looking to potentially buy back in when price is above the 50% the mark on the Bollinger Band. You're looking to buy back in on pullbacks to the to the 50% line and sell again at the top of the Bollinger Band and stop loss below the Bollinger Band if you get a if you get a, a close below that. Uh, here you get another potential buy signal, but you don't have any verification from Bollinger Bands as well. Uh, sell signal is going to be uh, testing the upper limits. RSI going oversold. RSI. Uh, going over bot so just looking at the 30 minute chart uh we have three potential buy signals here uh right here uh right here when price looking at tron when price touches the bottom band of the bollinger band and our side goes oversold uh and then we get uh you have to use your own metrics but bollinger price comes up to test the upper limits of the bollinger band gives you your buy your sell signal uh, price drops down again to an extreme low and we test the bottom area of the Bollinger Band and RSI becomes oversold. So that gives you your buy signal and then you get your sell signal when price comes up here and touches the upper area of the Bollinger Band. And you get another potential buy right here when price touches the lower area of the Bollinger Band and RSI goes oversold. Uh, and you get your exit single anywhere right around here. Uh, you don't get a buy signal here. You potentially get a buy signal right here because it does touch. Potentially this is a buy signal as well right here and right here um, but yeah that's how you use Bollinger Bands and RSI alternatively rather than RSI you can use something like money flow or MFI so uh, trading view calls that money flow and you can use MFI and it's the exact same thing you're looking for money flow to become oversold 
uh, right here and you get a buy signal when you touch the lower end of the Bollinger Band and then you touch the top, that's your sell signal. Uh, here, um, you get buy signals here, you get, see this is danger because MFI goes oversold here. And so you could have been buying into this entire dip, not a profitable position. And that's what I don't like about RSI or MFI is that it'll work out for you a lot of the times, but it doesn't, it doesn't give you, in my opinion, like more accurate ways to scalp or trade. That's why I don't use them. There's nothing wrong with trading that way, but um, you just get, when you're using an oscillator, uh, an oscillator can give you a poor indication. They don't, there's not, there's not with, with this strategy, there's not really well-defined risk management built into the strategy. You have to kind of come up with your own, but I know a lot of people who trade this way, especially with Bollinger Bands and RSI and Stochastic, and there's nothing. Decent amount of noob traders trade by it. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, so some of the stuff is self-fulfilling prophecy because a lot of people are using this. So the chart guys include Bollinger in their analysis by itself. No single indicator is that great. Yep. I'd give you my, uh, you know, listen, I got all the respect in the world for uh, for Dan, the chart guy. But uh, this is typically uh, every chart guy's episode I've ever watched. Hold on. This is every chart guy's episode I've ever watched. All right, so this is Dan, the chart guy, chart guys. Let's go to the daily chart. See if I can do my impersonation. He's like, well, guys, we had an inside bull bar break, a bear, uh, bear break of yesterday's uh, yesterday's bar, so we're trading below that now. So the bear is in full control of the market, guys. So the bears are looking for lower lows, and the bulls are looking for higher highs. Looking here at our pivotal low right here and our pivotal high. So yeah, bulls looking for higher highs and bears looking for lower lows. All right, guys, trade safe. <laughs> so listen, uh, respect uh, respect the Dan TDM, but... Not Dan TDM, but uh, Dan the Dan the Chart Man. But uh, that's kind of it's got every Chart Guys episode I've ever watched. Uh, Vanch asks about MACD. Yeah, not bad, man. Uh, MACD can be used. I use MACD. I don't use MACD on my day to day. I use Fisher Transform to spot divergence. But uh, MACD is also can be helpful to tell you when a trend is exhausting uh, before actual price action will tell you that uh, because it's looking at um, it's looking at divergence and price action as well. So. By the way, Chart Guys is a good place to go and chill Justin's stream, 100K plus subscribers there. Yeah, go tell him, man. Ben Joseph asks, how do I contact you? Uh, well, uh, you can go to our Discord, man. And yeah, just DM me there. If you're not familiar with Discord, uh, just shoot an email to um, contact at Kraken Cryptocurrency. Uh, Scott's already on it. Yeah, man. Just uh, mash dash. Uh, that's, that's Scott. He's the other admin. So yeah, you can either shoot us an email and we'll, uh, we'll work it out with you, man. Or um, uh, you can uh, go to the Discord and DM me, man. Hey, thanks, Stoner. Uh, I mean, you just gotta be—you just gotta be honest, man. I—it's—it's uh, it's, not—I uh, just try to do the right thing. Jay Constant, how we doing, man? Hopefully, hopefully, the leg day went went well for you the, uh, yesterday, and you were able to work off some of that anger at the Bitmex manipulation. Uh, when do I expect the pullback on BTC? Uh, I'd like to. Well, I'd like to be seeing it right now. Uh, this looks like uh, weak sauce volume. It looks like price is going to continue going down for me. Yep, Chike and Money Flow is pretty good, man. Oh, man. All right, guys, you know what time it is. It's about 12, 13 on the hour, meaning I've actually run 13 minutes longer than the regular break. So we're going to pause for the cause and take a brief break, guys. <laughs>
Hey guys, thanks for uh, hanging in with me there. Okay, so let's see what I missed in the chat. All right, I feel Jay Constant, smart man. So Jay Constant says that same remark got me banned at Mitch Ray on his stream. Only slime balls there. I'll keep it clean next time. Sorry. Hey man, it's all good, dude. Uh, you know this bear market's been hard on us all. Uh, I get it, dude. Um, I, there have been times when I've been frustrated as well. So I'm we're here for you, man. Like I'm not uh, alienated in, in what way whatsoever. Uh, I'm I'm familiar with. Uh, I, I mean I know Mitch Ray. Uh, I think his stream is entertaining. Uh, I don't really. Uh, again, I, I don't really dig dig the way that he he's a hard working guy. I'll give him that. He's definitely a hard working guy. He's he's uh, he, he's dedicated to his streams. He is dedicated to his streams. I don't have anything negative really to say about Mitch Ray. Um, the only thing I, I guess I don't know. Uh, I I'm, I he doesn't. I, I don't see a lot of his trades. I'm not sure on his trades, so I don't know how. I don't know, you know, if he if he actively trades, I don't know if he does. Uh, so I'd, I'd be interested in that. But he's a fun guy. He's a cool guy. He gets drunk on his stream a lot, you know, so I guess that's kind of fun, I guess. I guess you must have removed something from the chat because I don't see it, man. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, dude, it's all good, dude. Uh, this is... Uh, yeah, I should take that off. Maybe we'd get more viewership, but I mean, listen, like, you know, if you're 12, you probably shouldn't be trading cryptocurrency, but maybe you should. I don't know. Like, who who am I to tell you what you can and can't do, man? I don't know. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the CMEs. So let's see, where did uh, where did the day open up? So today's candle opened up at uh, 4203 and just went down from here. So looking at the futures, man, futures look very bearish. Uh, the futures look very bearish. So I'm expecting price to follow this. Uh, so that's why I'm in a fairly strong short position. And you can see the spot price is kind of reacting oppositely. Uh, so we'll see where they're running into that resistance. But I'm expecting uh, this is what uh, most of the smart traders I know watch. They watch CME. Uh, opened up on a little bit of a gap to the downside uh, a couple days ago. Uh, so we came back in and painted that gap right here, especially with our low yesterday. Uh, but yeah, yesterday was a big indecision day, man. We did have a nice run up uh, in CME, but a lot of lot of indecision. Uh, if we go down and look at the four hour chart on CME, uh, yeah, uh, looking looking pretty bearish, man. So let's take a look at the uh, let's take a look at the COT report. Yeah, so this is uh, this is institutional traders. This is the institutional trader net. And starting on the 18th of November, the 20th of November, man, they just started buying a lot of BTC. Uh, they also started, uh, they, they bought more for on the 26th, on the 26th to the 27th. So we'll wait and see how that plays out. Retail, 
uh, is selling at the exact same time that institutions are buying. So this is why I'm still uh, BTFD, man. BTFD. And actually, the largest four funds just went long on the 26th, just went long as opposed to short, so dropping their positions. And we saw this on CME. We saw that uh, funds were more short than long, and they were deleveraging their shorts as well. So still hedged, still hedged, because the, the variance isn't dramatic like we see here. Uh, 50 contracts uh, held by the largest firms to the long side, uh, short contracts 40 to the downside. So that's um, that's a nice divergence, but not massive, not massive. Not like we saw over here where we had uh, 60 to, to 40. So, uh, institutional funds still hedging, but open interest rising, man. Open interest rising and buying, uh, whereas professional traders are selling. So, interesting, interesting. Interesting to see. Any altcoins you guys want me to look at, man? Jay Constance says, I feel 12, but I am 38 with the body of a muscled 26-year-old bodybuilder. Hey, man, I'm jealous, dude. Uh, about, I stopped lifting about two years ago, and I have dropped probably about 30 pounds of muscle, man. And now I'm skinny as fuck. And, uh, you know, decent tone. I still eat healthy and really clean. Uh, you know, I've been pure keto for the last almost, almost three months now, going on three months. I feel fantastic. Uh, but... Um, But yeah, man, I just uh, with with running the with running the cracking crypto discord and running the premium group, doing the webinars, doing the live streams. And uh, I'm a single dad uh, of an 11 month year old daughter. I do not have time to uh, I don't have time to um, I don't have time to work out, man. I'm hoping that uh, everything pans out. But, you know, we just continue to grow bigger and bigger every day, man. So maybe uh, maybe I'm going to have to wait uh, a, a couple of years to uh, to get uh, to get to where I want to go, man. Uh, Ada, uh, computer doctor, Ethan. All right, cool, man. Sitting back in the weeds, but I said altcoins and you're like, yeah, yeah. Check out Ada, man. Hell yeah. I got you, dude. Uh, I was just looking at Ada earlier. Let me see if I actually have it pulled up here. I don't. So let's see where I have it. Cause it depends on what chart layout I pull it up on. See if I've got my drawings. Nope. I bet it's over here. Probably where Bitcoin Cash SV was. Hmm. Well, damn. Hmm. Do I have it here? Nah. All right, so it's cool. We'll just start off fresh uh, with the one that I normally use here. Alt one. Uh, first thing, let's look at the daily. Heiken Ashi and look at the big picture. Follow me now and you will not forget when Cardano was a dollar twenty five and now it's four cents. Uh, so here's the thing with Cardano, man. Uh, people pretty bullish on Cardano. Um, jury's out for me. Uh, because we're not really at that level where we actually had strong support. We can see TDST is showing us where we actually had super, super strong report down at uh, 671 Satoshis. We're only at like 975 right now. And if we look at VPVR, uh, I mean, it's not, it's not giving us a whole lot of data, but uh, let's extend that out a little bit. Yeah, uh, this is indicative of a downtrend and not consolidation because we've broken down below the point of control. Also, uh, the 55 period moving average just absolutely grinding us, the f just grinding us down, man. Grinding us down for a long time. Grinding us down since May, dude. Uh, again, my, my general thought is that I'm not bullish on altcoins until they break above the 55 period moving average on the daily chart. Uh, until then, we're just going to get little little pops. So we get a little pop here, get a little bit of sideways uh, consolidation. It was an area of distribution. Move down into a lower area. Price completes a nine count. To, again, TD sequential, guys. And again, JD Lim's got the best TD sequential indicator out there, guys. But look how accurate this thing is, man. Look, price reverses on a nine, goes up. Price reverses on a nine, goes up. Price reverses on a nine, starts to go up a little bit. So the only thing that uh, worries me about this is that we... 
we're, we're in this price flipping sideways movement and we're not getting a lot of bullish follow through guys uh falling volume on this rise up this is indicative of a weak trend to me uh so it doesn't even look like it doesn't even look like anything's going to happen here guys now we'll wait and see if some volume pours in uh but it's not looking it's not looking fantastic guys just from a trending perspective does i'm not seeing the momentum here to actually exit the trend uh this could be um this could be oversold volume, but it's not. This actually is starting to look more like breakdown volume to me. If we get a big, if we start getting some red candles with a lot of volatility uh, right coming down from here, that's gonna be breakdown uh, indication to me. And yeah, we're probably going down down further, man, down further. Ada's really gotta get their shit together, man, or else we're going down further. All right, so let's look at specifics here. Let's switch out and let's look at uh, volume profile ATR and SA. I can't look at sentiment data for ADA, so that's okay. Uh, yeah, uh, not a highly volatile, we see volatility rising right here, but actually look, uh, on this uh, on this upswing, we actually see volatility dying off. So that's not a fantastic sign. That's really not what I wanna see. Uh, let me go to the 30 minute chart, or actually I'll go to the four hour and see if I see any trades. Okay. So your largest area of resistance in the short term is going to be this distribution area right here. Uh, and that's, uh, that's supported here from, uh, from our VPVR. So this is going to be your big area. Now, an area that you want to watch here, an area that you want to watch for a potential trade breakout setup is this area right here. Because there's no volume in between there and here. So that is looking like a pretty nice, uh, a pretty nice breakout scalp. So actually, I like that. So that's uh, that's going to be. Hopefully, you can see that well. Okay, so that level is going to be uh, one thousand four to uh, one thousand eighteen. So that's going to be a nice one point three six percent trade. Not the greatest, but guys, sometimes you got to revert back to just being comfortable with like one percent gains, man. One percent gains, you grow and grow and grow, man. And, uh, and and you put that in, but it's an area of low volume nodes. So that's an area where price is gonna shoot through like butter. And then we are expecting to get some significant resistance once we hit up here, because that is our previous level of distribution. Uh, breaking up above that, you have a juicier trade actually on the table. If you're able to get above that resistance, you see here uh, where we don't really have any resistance. Uh, we've got little baby bitch resistance right here. Little baby bitch resistance there, uh, and but we don't have significant resistance until we hit this level right here. This level right here. So that gives you a nice potential juicy trade, and then you've also got a little bit of resistance right here. But that's actually an accumulation area, so that's not resistance. So again, you have to look at VPSV to help you correlate what VPVR is only going to tell you as volume. So you've got a nice juicy trade. Here. And here, these are pretty nice looking trades to me. Now the one here is not the highest uh, reward, but this one right here actually isn't looking too bad. So that's, that's a potential about 6% movement right there. And you can set your stop loss down below support once we get up there and you have to see what your point, yeah, you have to look at volume and, and where you're actually establishing your point of control. Yeah, so right now price is getting rejection from the current point of control. So yeah, if we're able to break above that, I'm expecting to see a little bit of consolidation to pull back to test that. And then if we spring off that, probably gonna come back up, we're gonna come back up and test our previous point of control at 1206, which is this resistance area right here. That's this distribution area that we're seeing right here. And then breaking above that, we don't have really resistance until again, that area around uh, 1097, 1105, pretty tight area right there. So that's that'd be a good, nice trade I'd be looking to take potentially. Uh, and looking at support, well, you've put in some support. You put in some support, guys. You put in support right here. It's not the strongest in the world, 
but you've got some support at 964 and then you've got your more significant support in this cluster right here you got a lot of accumulation going on right here So 935 to 927, that's your area of support. Uh, dropping down below that and closing candles below this, especially if it's on high volume, danger, man. Danger, Will Robinson. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see, though, here. Uh, because looking at the four-hour chart, this isn't, it's not the most horrible thing in the world. Uh, we're now getting rejection from the session on the 29th of November's point of control uh, and our overall VPVR point of control. But if we're able to get above that, that's fairly significant, and we can be looking at this, these uh, upside potentials here, guys. And XYO ETH he asks for. Actually, I'm going to set an alert. Be something that I'd be looking to take. Okay, what is this? XYO ETH. Can't do it, man. If it's not on trading view, I can't look at it, brother. I'm sorry. Although I did, uh, ETH pairs do look kind of strong today. I'm not going to lie. And OMG. Okay, cool. I should have OMG already charted. Let me just go over it. Yeah, I already got OMG charted. So yeah, OMG actually is starting to look pretty good. We have gotten above the point of control and we've been holding it for about a, a full, almost two days now. Uh, we are currently seeing if we can't get over our current resistance area right here. Which I think we are going to do. And then we're looking at uh, we're looking at targeting our our recent distribution areas right here at about 425. I've actually undercut that a little bit at 422, and then uh, 438 is our previous resistance right here, where we have a strong rejection type resistance. Uh, and then this is accumulation, so that's not strong. Uh, that's not strong resistance. You've got a little bit of resistance right here as well, but it's actually pretty weak. So. All right, quit autoing me so the guys can see the charts. Come on, man. So yeah, OMG actually looks pretty goddamn bullish to me. Uh, overall, uh, really looking for a return at this point of control up here. Uh, so we'll see how quickly and how 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 fast we can smash through these points of resistance right here. Uh, and we'll also see if this is if this if this doesn't play out. Uh, we've got a little bit of falling volume on this recent movement up. So we'll see. We'll see how this one plays out. Um, ATR is pretty low, so we're looking for a fairly explosive movement. And we do see falling volume in a period of consolidation. So I'm waiting to see how this plays out. But OMG, I'm actually pretty bullish on right now. Uh, falling down, we've got support, obviously. Uh, we've got fairly strong support right here. That's where a lot of accumulation was taking place. At uh, 364, 367. So yeah, a couple ways to play this. You can try to enter here with a with a pretty wide stop loss. You can wait for the breakout of the point of the re, of the previous point of control, which is right here. So about 387, getting above that resistance level, because uh, there's not a whole lot of volume uh, above that, <laughs> not a lot of areas. So if you look at this, uh, there's a there's pretty shallow. There's huge cuts. There's huge cuts here uh, in our in our volume profile. So these are areas where price is going to move uh, pretty much like a hot knife through butter. Right here. And uh, right here. Those are areas where price is going to move fairly significantly. We've got strong, we've got some strong resistance right here, a f weaker resistance right here. And then, yeah, once we get above here, our pocket of resistance, bam, it's going right to the upside. So, actually, pretty bullish on OMG. Uh, where is the BTC pullback? Thirty-eight hundred. That's a pretty that's a pretty nice target uh, for a short, but I would be more I'm more interested in looking at pullbacks to like forty-one sixty-seven, forty-one fifty, and forty-one thirty right now at the current point in time. 
uh, potentially even 4174. And then we'll see what happens because then price is going to be getting pretty close to the uh, 30 minute 55 period moving average right there. And I'll, I'll just wait and see what price does then. But yeah. Computer Dr. Ethan, spend all my time in crypto now too. LOL, single dad, same thing. Hey man, respect brother. It's, it's hard out here for a pimp, dude. Jay Constant, I'm also a single dad of a 10 year old son. It's fantastic. He is the best thing that happened to me, but it takes a lot of energy. He plays soccer at uh, at uh, FC. Is that like Fort? I don't know. Gronigan and trains four times a week. Hey, man, that's awesome, dude. That your kids are in sports. I have um, uh, my older kids are uh, are eleven and ten. I have a boy and a girl that are eleven and ten, and um, I have joint custody over them. And they're super super active in sports, man. Super super active in sports. Yeah, uh, my boy is in. Uh, he calls it ninja class. It's gymnastics. My daughter's in gymnastics. My boys, in, they're both in soccer. Uh, you know, my dot. They both play instruments. My daughter plays. The, <laughs> my daughter plays the trombone. Uh, my son plays the trumpet. Uh, they both play a little bit of uh, guitar. Uh, they both play a little bit of keyboard. So yeah, man, it's uh, it's it's hard out here. It's hard out here. <laughs> Bubble Games asks, do you think we will drop under four K again? Potentially, we'll see. Kind of what happens when we get there. Sisu asks for Raven. Man, I'll check that out, man. Power to the single dads, man. My son says sell every crypto. <laughs> but I say no, son, it is for your future. Just maybe, maybe one day. Yeah, actually, uh, funny funny to note. Uh, that's what I'm getting my kids for Christmas is Bitcoin. Uh, and then I'm going to teach them how to set up a lightning node uh, you know, on their laptops so they can run that. But I'm not giving them the private keys to their, to their Bitcoin. Uh, that's going to be in their savings account. Print those paper wallets out. Cut them in half. One in one safety deposit box and one under grandma's floorboard. Plus one power to the single pops. Yeah, man. Stacking Stoner says, hey, I dream of being a good father and successful in crypto endeavors. Y'all are living my dream, even though it may get rocky at times. I'm envious. Cheers to good dads and crypto knowledge. Hey, man. I appreciate it, man. Uh, it's, it's, it's a journey, man. It's definitely a journey, dude. It's a journey, man. And it's a struggle keeping it all together and being a good parent and being successful and being a, being a responsible businessman. Uh, but yeah, dude, I'm really happy that I took the plunge and said, screw you to, to traditional employment. Uh, I love, I love, I mean, you know, I get to work from home now. It's not all, listen, yeah, it's not all, it's not all zuzus and wham whams, man. Like there's tons of times where, uh, it gets really stressful, man. And it's really hard to make everything work together. But as opposed to what being, you know, locked in a cubicle for eight, 10 hours a day whew, with commute, man, screw that. You get there, man. Uh, If I want to day trade, what time zones of the chart should I be looking for? Time, like, so yeah, time frame. So I like, I like the 30 minute chart. I find that it cuts a very nice balance. I don't like trading on the one minute chart. It's just too quick for me. Not too quick, but I, you get, you get too many false signals. Depending on, depending on how you're looking to trade, depending on how you're looking to trade. If you're looking at using like an oscillator or something like Bollinger Bands, 30 minute chart would be pretty nice for you. Um, if you are looking at trading like with session volume, which is how I trade, uh, then, um, then you'll be pretty comfortable with um you'll be pretty comfortable with uh like the 30 minute chart or the 15 minute chart you'll be all right 15 minute chart 30 minute chart are pretty good for day trading 30 minute chart i think is fantastic like i know some people disagree with me i think it's too long but i think it's fantastic for day trading especially if you use session volume because then you're able to see you're able to catch those great movements man being a dad brings out our deepest mission to success yep you're absolutely right man i i mean every day it's 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 the uh, it's the it's it's the knowledge that I have to do good for them. It's the knowledge that, and especially being self-employed and running my own business like I do, if there there's nobody there to catch me, no safety net. You know, um, I have to make this work. I have to be a good father, and it, it's all it all rolls into one. But I love that because it's empowering. Because it, like, once you realize that you are in control of your own life and it's your decisions that are going to affect your future, and it's really futile to blame other people for your failures or to expect other people to help you. Uh, I'm just a lot happier, man. I rely on myself and I'm open to help. Like I have fantastic help and support, fantastic friends, fantastic family. But at the end of the day, it's on me, dude. It's on me. And I like it that way. Uh, I'll look at BAT and DGB and then I'm going to bounce, guys. Basic attention token on Bunny. Daily chart, Heiken Ashi, big picture.
Hmm. So, basic attention token doesn't look terrible. Had that pull back to the 618. We've got an aggressive 13. Let's zoom down and see what we see. So, where did price reverse? Price reversed on an unperfected 9. Uh, and then we price flipped for a little bit and entered into a period of consolidation and held that 55 EMA, guys. So, we still have the daily momentum. Uh, now, we've got the point of control. Uh, we've got the uh, current, if we look at current time frame, uh, point of control is underneath us. So, that's actually looking pretty good, guys. And we're coming up to a pocket of a low volume note. That's really nothing to call mom about. Uh, it's a 4% bump movement guys, but that would be a nice trade that I'd be on the lookout for. Uh, if you were, if you were, uh, getting uh, BAT down in these lower areas of accumulation, man, good job, dude. Uh, we, we were able to complete account. Eh, it's not really a perfect account. So there is a danger of us reversing if we don't have enough momentum to break. Uh, previous TDST resistance is at 45.57. So, but yeah, let's look at overall, like where's the entire, where's the overall. Yeah. Overall, we broke the absolute point of control. So looking at the entire time frame of BAT, we broke the absolute point of control. So that's actually pretty good. So as long as that holds, we look for price to move up toward these upper levels. Um, combined with that aggressive 13, that's pretty nice because price pretty much reverses right after that aggressive 13. Uh, so if we just look at, uh, well, let's boom, let's look at that. All right, so we're able to see point of control, good resistance here at 48.12. So that's where we're gonna be looking at right here. Doesn't look like super strong resistance, but uh, it's gonna be the strongest resistance that we can see currently at this point in time. Uh, we've also got, again, I'm looking at Heiken Ashi, so I've gotta switch out, otherwise we're gonna get screwed up. Yeah. Yeah, so resistance right here. Resistance right here. Where we have, obviously this is, so what this is telling us is that this is where a lot of retail investors like entered into the short or sold, uh, trying to catch the tails of the people who actually sold the top. Yeah, and look at that price reverse on a perfected nine count to the upside. Beautiful. That's what I like to see. Uh, Japanese candlesticks on the daily didn't give us as clean of an entry uh, signal, but uh, we had TDST support right here, so we could have been entering anywhere around TDST support. Doesn't give us a stop loss, but now we've got, we do have something to work with now. So actually, now I want to go to volume profile. Not going to be able to look at sentiment data. All right, so still kind of at a period of consolidation, honestly, uh, and ATR getting extremely low, getting really low relatively. So ATR is getting pretty low, so expecting some kind of movement or decreased volatility. Now, if the ATR continues to drop as price moves up, I'm going to expect for price to get reversed from these areas of resistance or even even sooner like maybe not even make it over maybe not even make it over this level right here but now we do have a strong area of support so we've got support right here this is where a lot of people were accumulating and I would be setting a stop loss probably somewhere right around here and again I'm looking at a daily close below the stop loss uh, because we, you can see that if you had a stop loss here, if you entered in here, you would have just got wicked out of your profitable trade. So again, cryptocurrency is highly volatile, man. Uh, don't be using them hard stops unless you're going to bed and you're really worried. But again, if you're really worried, you should probably just take profit or get out of your position. Uh, so falling volume in this period of consolidation. So this actually probably doesn't look like it's going to pop to me right now. It has the potential to, uh, but I would like to see a little bit. I, I expect actually for BAT, we'll probably stay range bound here for a little bit as volatility continues to drop off and we really coil up and then we'll see an explosive move. Now, whether that'll be to the upside or the downside, I'm not exactly sure right now. Uh, let's go to the four hour chart and see if I can see it. If I can see a trade, if I can see a swing trade. Yeah, so that's that's lining up pretty nicely with where I've got my yeah. Look at those points of controls on those previous sessions. That's lining up pretty nice. So actually, that was a period of accumulation, uh, but we had more. Look, you know, a lot of sellers were selling here. They saw this drastic move down. They looked to sell. They looked to sell, 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 sell. Uh, we'll see how this plays out. This is actually looking like it could potentially reverse from here. But again, I think we're going to be range bound for a while here until we can establish real strong support and real strong resistance. And I think price will probably tighten up a little bit more uh, to uh, we got a little bit of higher lows, higher highs. Let's see if we see any um, let's see if we see any bullish divergence or bearish divergence. No. So we have convergence right there. 
and convergence right there. So yeah, I'm not really seeing anything with the fissure. Uh, now this could be a little bit of a bull pennant. Uh, price could move down a little bit. Uh, but looking at the 240 minute chart, I mean, we're in the, we pierced into the Kumo cloud. So typically you're expecting an edge to edge trade. So that actually would tell you that you're going to come up here about another 10%. So uh, broke up above the baseline. So the baseline would have you looking. So the way I'd probably play this out is looking for a potential re-entry at 4028 with a stop loss below 3863 or potentially entering at 3878 with a stop loss at 3679. That's probably how I'd play that. But uh, not looking too terrible to me, guys, honestly. Basic attention token doesn't look too bad right now. And I should have DGB already charted out. Uh, is it over here? It's possible it didn't save. Suffering succotash. Erg. All right, so we'll just fuck it. We'll just redo it. Daily chart, Heikinashi. Big picture. Yeah, so it looks like we just got rejected from a 55 period moving average. Uh, we had that nice little run up. We had talked about this. We had talked about this. Uh, got this nice little run up. Uh, lowering volume on the retracement though, so we could potentially still see more movement out of this bad boy. Uh, especially if this 13 period moving average holds right here, uh, which it did. Boom, boom. We've got some pretty indecision candles right here. So we'll see if the bullish volume comes in here on DGB. Uh, we weren't able to break TDST support, but we also didn't post a complete a nine count to the upside. So we'll see if price can actually move up here a little bit. We do see uh, price move down on a four, and that's something that we do commonly see. The four is obviously like kind of an indecision candle and can give you some uh, can give you some some wobbly. Um... The four can often reverse price. To put it in its simplest terms, sorry. Sometimes I wax loquaciously. Uh, but uh, uh, rising volume, man. We had this, what looks to me like oversold volume uh, because we did have breakdown volume right here. Uh, and then we have a little bit of oversold volume. Not as I'd like to see it, oversold volume higher than breakdown volume. But we'll just wait and see. Uh, again, on the daily chart, not above the 55 period moving average. So I'm still cautious on it. This to me probably, it, to me, I'm thinking that this is a rejection. Uh, but we'll see if we actually are actually able to post a higher low and see where we close here out in a couple days. Uh, and if we get a break above that 55 period moving average and more poignantly, this TDST resistance, uh, 343, then I don't see us, I don't see a lot holding us back from come back, coming back up and entering into testing this uh, this resistance zone right here, guys. Uh, that's pretty big, so I want to keep it a little bit more accurate than that because I don't like 40% gaps. That's just lazy trading. Um, 375. 375, and then the upper bounds of that resistance are going to be 384, 389. Uh, getting above that, man, look at that. Low volume node area right there, guys. Man, we're able to get above that. Price is going to move through that like butter. Yeah, I like that. So setting up to be a good trade, but uh, I'd rather take this uh, breakout trade. Like right above here, if we're able to pop this resistance right here and get above this downslope, uh, then we can get back up here to these areas. But man, that's way, that's way, way, way far off, guys. I'm not even there yet. I'm not even there yet. Uh, let's look at um, volume profile on the four hour chart. I'm going to have to save this now as the new template. All right, so we had a pretty pretty nice run up on Digibyte there. Uh, that's not bad. Uh, and then a fall down and then sideways. So this could be a bullish pennant, or excuse me, a bearish pennant that we're seeing here. Uh, we're obviously in this level of accumulation. So local resistance right now is going to be at uh, 338. See if we can get above that and below that 331. So that's going to be acting as our resistance area right now. And if we're able to get above that, then boom, then we're probably going higher because I don't see... I don't see a whole lot of resistance uh, up until 359 uh, on the four hour chart. So that's potentially a nice trade. That's a breakout trade I might potentially take. Uh, we don't seem to have a lot of support in this area. Uh, we do have this uh, resistance turn support. 
So maybe right here, uh, we can see stop loss hunts down into those uh, to that low volume node. So, but I'd be worried if we break down below like 309, 307, uh, that to me would be pretty much a confirmed rejection. Uh, let's look at the EMAs on the four hour chart. Yeah, look, we we broke above the 55 period moving average and came down to test the 55 moving average on the four hour chart. So we'll see if that holds uh, and we'll see if we can uh, get a nice another little pump above this, guys. So again, uh, not a horrible time to enter. You can set a stop loss right below 309, 307 and look to target uh, 331, uh, 338. And then if that holds, then you're looking at 360. Not bad, not bad. Nice little pullback, not as far as I'd like to see it, but uh, what is that, looking like a 382? Yeah, about a 382, about a 382. So that's pretty bullish actually, if it bounces off the 382. I'll probably get another, we'll probably get a second wave off that then. All right, uh, Computer Dr. Ethan asks, do I hodl any altcoins for the long haul or only day trade? Nope, I do not hodl any altcoins for the long haul. I only day trade. Uh, the only thing I hodl is BTC. Uh, let's see here. Tapanchu Dahia, well said. Can you su also suggest your view on the recent pump? Um, recent pump of what? Uh, you're gonna have to specify which coin, my friend. Uh, Aika Atbella says XRP price in December. XRP price in December. Uh, that's not really my thing, price predictions, but I kind of react to the market rather than predict the market. But uh, XRP price in December is actually starting to shape up to be pretty good, guys, especially if this ascending trend line holds uh, and we're able to get above. I talked about this earlier in the stream. We've got some pretty strong resistance coming above us. We've got TDST resistance and we've also got our 55 daily, our, our four, four hour period moving average coming down on us. But if we're able to get above those two, then this will complete the inverted head and shoulders pattern and we'll go up to test 44 cents. And if we break through that, uh, 45 cents at that 618. So that might take us, that might take us to the middle of December. And we'll just see how price plays out. Otherwise, we're going to be in this consolidation range for a while. Uh, XLM, hey man, uh, sorry bro, I got to get going. Man. And uh, hey man, uh, I appreciate you coming in, man. Uh, Dr. Ethan, man, shout out to the single dads out there, guys. Loving you guys. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling you, dude. Uh, so uh, yeah, I got to actually go get my two older kids. And we're going to go to Christmas in my town tonight is uh they're they're you know they're uh putting the lights on the tree and lighting the tree and hot cocoa and like you know uh pony rides that kind of stuff I, of course the kids are too big for ponies now i think so it's probably like right sleigh rides you know they got the horse pulling the sleigh around and pooping on the main city streets it'll be fun it'll be good times caroling and all that good stuff uh normally i just kind of hide out in the library and read books while i do that stuff so so yeah, guys, uh, uh, but yeah, man, hey, we're live every morning at 11 a.m. Uh, CST. Uh, we'll take a look at XLN tomorrow, man. I'm sure it's not gonna do a whole lot between them there. Said everybody who missed out on a pump. All right, guys, so uh, really appreciate you guys coming. Um, shout out to uh, X42. Go check out X42 at x42.tech. Uh, go check out MMO Pro at mmopro.org. Um, and uh, go check out Your Crypto Daily News and Johnny Boy Crypto on YouTube. Proud supporters of the stream. And then we get into what is the most important thing that you can do today with your life. Well, you can head over to cracking, repeat after me, crackingcryptocurrency.com and click the blue button on the main page. That's going to bring you to our Discord. That's where you want to be. Curated news, free signals once to twice a week. Tra you can keep up to date with our trade uh, uh, trading group and see what our trading group is doing. Have access to live day trading voice chat on the Discord platform. Access to general chat. We've got bots in there. We've got coin alerts. We've got M we've got giveaways. We've got bounties. We've got all the fun stuff you guys could ever dream of, guys. Uh, we've got knowledge, people to help each other out with charting, everything you guys want. And you get me, and you get Scott. Uh, join the community. Uh, click this blue button. It's going to bring you right to us, guys. If you want to support the stream, uh, there is a little... It's, it's right here. That... There it is. Boom. Right there. QR code right there for BTC. If you guys want to make a small one-time donation, highly appreciate it. Otherwise, uh, if you guys want to get something for your money, uh, check out our merch store. Dude, uh, Scott did a great job on this, guys. Uh, if you want to help keep the lights on around here, uh, the HODL shirt is fantastic. And as you guys know, uh, check this out, man. This is my favorite. Go to accessories and mugs and drinkware. I just bought me one of these. Should be coming tomorrow. Um, or excuse me, Monday. Uh, bam, right here. Look at that. That contrast HODL mug, guys. It is scientifically proven 
that if you drink your coffee out of this mug, you will be 40% more attractive to the opposite sex. I mean, that's science, man. So if you guys, if you guys enjoy what you see, uh, pick up something we highly appreciate it. If you are interested in expanding your trading, uh, and you would like to sign up for our premium signals and mentorship program, uh, it is, uh, I did change the prices. We are back to regular prices. Uh, actually they're updated in the discord. So, but uh, I did allow somebody to buy a discounted price because I had not changed them on the Discord. So if you get a hold of us today, I will honor the pre. I will honor. I will still honor for today the Black Friday sale of one month forty nine ninety nine, three months one twenty nine ninety nine, and lifetime seven ninety nine ninety nine. Um, otherwise, starting tomorrow, back to the normal prices. Which, uh, uh, but yeah, you'll get access to the uh, VIP voice chat for day trading. You'll get access to the VIP chat room for day trading. You'll get access to all my trade setups and charts. Uh, and you also get access to our weekly webinars for uh, the, our private webinars for subscribers, access to the resource library, which we're finishing right now and is going live, uh, access to bots as soon as they come out and uh, all that fun stuff, guys. Otherwise, if you have any questions, uh, email us, contact at crackingcryptocurrency.com or fill out the nice form below. Leave all comments, questions, thoughts, sarcastic remarks, uh, death threats in the comment section down below. We do respond to them. So uh, appreciate it. And you guys have been wonderful today. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. And as always, guys, peace out.